Math 31, let's review up the slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines. So if two lines, L1 and L2, are parallel non-vertical lines, then the slopes of the lines are equal. So m sub 1 should be equal to m sub 2. So m sub 1 would be the slope of the first line, m sub 2 would be the slope of the second line. And then on the flip of that, if two lines have equal slopes, then we know they're parallel. So this is an if and only if statement. Meaning, if you tell me the lines are parallel, I know they have the same slopes. But if I'm looking at two lines and I see they have the same slopes, then I know they're parallel. All right, now the perpendicular lines, they have slopes that are a little bit more intricate in terms of how they're connected to each other. So let's unpack that. If lines L1 and L2 are perpendicular, non-vertical lines, then the slope of one line is the opposite of the reciprocal of the slope of the other line. Okay, so M sub 2 would be equal to negative 1 over m sub 1. Again, m sub 1, slope of the first line, m sub 2, slope of the second line. And let's look at this phrase, right? It's the opposite, so you see the negative sign. The slope of one line is the opposite of the reciprocal of the slope of the other. So when I say opposite, I have this negative symbol. When I have reciprocal, I have the reciprocal, right? 1 over that number. All right, so you might me also hear me say, negative reciprocal instead of opposite reciprocal. All right, and again, it's an if and only if statement. If I see that the slope of one line is the opposite of the reciprocal of another line's slope, then they're perpendicular. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at two lines and we're gonna try and determine if they are perpendicular, parallel, or neither. All right, so again, if two lines have equal slopes, parallel, right? If two lines, if their slopes are opposite reciprocals of each other, perpendicular, and if they don't fall into either of those two categories, great, then they're neither parallel nor perpendicular, which happens all of the time. Okay, so I'm going to scooch this way up so we can get the entire problem and its graph into view. There we go. So this is saying graph the two lines and determine whether they are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. And here are our two lines. All right, so before I even get gone, I'm going to label and scale my axes. All right, I have a feeling I can see tens, maybe fours, fives in here. So I'm just gonna scale this. I'm gonna make it my standard one square equals one unit. Now for me personally, when I go to graph lines, I like them to be in slope intercept form. So for both of these lines, let me get them into slope intercept form. I'm gonna work this line first. I'll work two y minus x equaling 10, and then I'll come over here and do this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is add x to both sides. So I see this as 2y equaling x plus 10. And then the next thing I need to do is divide by 2. And I want to show you a common error I see. So I see this every year when I'm teaching, and I, I want to point it out. I get this all the time. Students will tell me y equals x plus 5. And they'll say, well, Miss A, I, I divided this side by 2. Not really. You have to remember there's parentheses around this numerator, right? That those fractions, those binomials in the fractions are always protected by parentheses. And dividing by two is equivalent to multiplying by one half. So when you think about another way of writing this, let me erase this. This would be saying I am going to multiply one half into the binomial x plus 10 or really this is one half x plus five. All right, so you have to remember to divide the two into the x and the two into the 10, right? I call it like little bunny ears or alien ears, right? So those little arrows, they have to go to both of them. So you have to bunny ear to here and here or alien ear to here and here. And again, a different way of thinking about that is dividing by two is like multiplying by a half. So the one half gets multiplied to the x and to the 10. So when I look at this, Right here, I can see, well, I have a slope of 1 half and a y-intercept, not of 5, but 0, comma 5, right? We want to get into the habit of writing our y-intercepts as ordered pairs. All right, now let me take a look at this one. We have 2y equaling x plus 4. Well, this one, all I have to do is divide by 2. And again, I'm going to be real careful. I'm going to alien ear it. So I'll get y equaling 1 half x plus 2. So here I can see the slope is 1 half, and I can see the y-intercept is the ordered pair is 0, comma 2. That looks a little funky. Let me erase this and rewrite it better. 
All right, so now that I've worked that, let me go check back in with my original problem. It says graph the two lines. So let, let me do that first, and then I'll make sure I answer everything that's asked of me. So the first part was said graph them. So let me go up to zero, five, one, two, three, four, five. Now, if the slope is one half, that means for every one unit I rise, so I'm gonna go up positive one because this number is positive one, and then I'm gonna to move to the right two units. So up one, right two, up one, right two. I could also, if I want, go down one, left two. But as I do that, let me connect all these dots. It's a pretty good line. Looks something like that. All right, now this line starts at zero two, but its slope is also one half. So up one, right two, up one, right two, up one, right two, or if I wanted, down one, left two. All right. Yeah, that looks pretty parallel, right? They're not touching. Okay, so I've graphed the two lines and I wanna determine if they're parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Well, if I look at their slopes, their slopes are the same. So because their slopes are equal, we know the lines are parallel. So this first example we were looking at, we saw parallel lines, great. And let's just say, for example, if this slope was one half and this was negative two, so let me just write this here. If the slope in this problem, even though it was one half, but let's just say, for example, if it was negative two, that is the opposite reciprocal to one half. If that was the case, then the slopes would have been perpendicular. And if the slopes, if this was one half and this was any number other than one half or negative two, then the answer would have been neither. All right, but I wanna erase this because this isn't our slope. All right, so we're gonna practice one more of these and wrap up this section. All right, see you in a bit, bye.